Did you did you see that uh, um, Ted Lieu tweeted at uh, Ron DeSantis or whatever, and he's like, "It's not hard to to condemn Nazis, Ron." I saw that, and I was just like, at this point. I don't think there is any unaffiliated person who is sitting there going like, wow, Ron DeSantis wouldn't condemn Nazis. He must be racist. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> At this point, everyone's either like, I know he's not, but I'm going to call him that anyway. Or they support him and they say, we know you're just lying. Yeah. There, I, I, there's, where is the, where is the person think, confused about this? I think what's going on, though, and I think a lot of people are missing this, is that in all the talk about Ron DeSantis 2024, will he run? Won't he run? Is he going to go against Trump, et cetera, et cetera? A lot of what's been missing in that conversation is that Ron DeSantis is up for re-election this year in Florida. Yep. And so people are missing the fact that you are going to get psyoped by the media and by the left like you've never seen before in Florida. Now, remember, Ron only won by like one point right the last time around in 2018 now he he wasn't as much of a household name back yeah. then as he is now his approval ratings are much much higher and so obviously with the mood of the country he should do quite well but they are going to throw the absolute gauntlet at ron DeSantis. so they're going to go and this is just the start this is just the start of it they find some crazy group on the side of the road you are going to see a complete unleash on Ron DeSantis, and that's going to be the test run for 2024. Maybe, maybe. But the one thing stopping Ron DeSantis from a potential 2024 run is that he is the governor of Florida, and a lot of people want him to stay there because he's more effective than he would be as president. If they come at him and they actually end up winning Florida, then DeSantis could run in 2024. Maybe that's good for Republicans and populists, or or maybe, you're right, and maybe what they want to do is they want they want to take the governorship from him so that he says, okay, well, now I'm free to run in 2024 and create a rift between him and the Trump and Trump and the support and the base. And maybe that's, you know, a chaos strategy. They will do anything they can to split up the populist movement. You're seeing them already do this. You're seeing people who are just spread. You're going to see like Ron, by the way, what's the biggest right to so the main the main argument for Ron DeSantis? And I'm, I, I don't have a, like a dog in this fight. I'm not arguing one way or the other. But the main idea is they say, well, Trump has baggage and Ron doesn't. And 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 Ron is effective. And, you know, people get turned off when they hear about Trump. But with Ron, he doesn't have that stuff. The point is to give him the baggage now. They right. want to bloody him up and dirty him up and destroy his Wikipedia page and do anything they can to just put as many marks on this guy before 2020. I, I, I think we have deeper problems than that, that I don't, I don't know if that's going to matter as much. I'm, I'm sure it, obviously it will matter, but well, I hope it doesn't. This, this country is so hyper polarized. I don't know how much more we can withstand. You, you can go on, look at Project Veritas. I mean, James O'Keefe is getting more and more popular among regular people. I went to uh, a little farm nearby. In fact, we have a little alpaca behind Lily sitting right here that we, we, we put up uh, every so often. And it looks just like Retracto. I thought it was Retracto. It is actually. not. It just looks like it. Yeah. And we were out, I, was at, I was at this little farm, um, just a little farm, not super political people. And we were just talking about regular stuff and they were fairly moderate. And then I mentioned, I think we had just had like James O'Keefe on the show. This was a few months ago. And then pe some, some, there's a guy in the store and the woman, they're both like, we love James O'Keefe. <laughs> and I was like, really? And they were like, yes. They were Amazing. like, you know, we're sick of the manipulation, the lies. He does great work. When I, when I, I, I heard that and we're in like a moderate area, it's like decently blue and, and, and we're like, we're not far from DC. So it's, it's fairly mixed politically. But I, with all of the smears they've thrown at him, with his Wikipedia page being completely fictitious, nonsensical op-eds saying Project Veritas is far right, racist, conspiracy, whatever, the, 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 the narrative control is gone. Do you see what they're doing now on Wikipedia? There's actually an argument right now on Wikipedia. Apparently, there's a page called the um, the Massacres of Communism. And, <laughs> and they want to delete it. There's actually right. an argument yes. about deleting that page because they're trying and they're trying to say this stuff about, oh, well, these, this was unintentional. This was just a, what do they say in China? The famine years, the three years of famine. Three this wasn't years something of natural that was done. Disasters. Three years natural, of natural, natural yeah. disasters, yes, right? Natural right. disasters. But, but my point is just it's ineffective. The, the, all the smears they've thrown at him and still regular people down the street are big fans of his. They they didn't know who I was. They didn't watch the show. They didn't listen to podcasts, but they were familiar with, with Project Veritas and they loved it. Yeah. I mean, look at the Epstein expose that Veritas did with uh, Amy Rohrbeck or whatever her name is, Rohrbeck. Biggest story they've ever done. Uh, they, they, they get a, a leaked video of, of ABC basically saying they had witness testimony about Epstein that, there was, that, was, that was shut down. 
And that's Project Veritas doing this. It's, it's, it, they're not only putting out partisan information. But I, I use James O'Keefe as an example that, you know, when you mentioned Ron DeSantis and his Wikipedia page and trying to smear him, I'm like, I don't know if that matters anymore. Yeah. I think, I think. Well, it's not just the Wikipedia, though. And that's, that's, no, I, that, that's part of it. But it's the idea is it's the steady drumbeat. And it's going to, you know, first it's the Nazis on the side of the road. What happens when there's, look, they still haven't caught the pipe bomber from January 5th? Sure, sure. But what I happens just, when there's more stuff like that that goes on? In, I'm telling look you, at they what are going to throw, so the regime is going to do anything they can to take out someone they view as But a it's like a person in quicksand thrashing violently and sinking faster for doing it. You look at what they said. We, we, we covered this the other day talking about the Great Honkening. The Toronto Sun was like, the trucker protest that are a bunch of far-right racist Nazi flag-waving people who stole food from the homeless. Yeah. And we're just oh, was like, this, Was this that one like, yeah, like columnist, the, yeah. that one crazy columnist guy who was right? Well, they were that. like, Trudeau said it. Well, yeah, like, they, yeah, these yeah. people just got in a truck one morning and you're like, you know what, we're going to mess with homeless people today. That's our whole <laughs> cause. Like, to hear the media <laughs> characterize them, that's what you think it was like, you know, hey, I'm going to go be racist with my fellow truckers. Like, they have no other motivation but besides trying to be horrible Fringe people. minority, they call this, this, this massive convoy, which is now spreading to all these other cities, which may be spreading to the U.S. I'm just saying, I feel like we're winning. And by we, it's, it's such a massive and eclectic political group. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got post-liberal, I guess they call it, people who used to be your traditional liberal now finding themselves politically homeless or more aligned with conservatives simply because they agree on fundamental human rights. You've got libertarians all of a sudden agreeing with conservatives on a bunch of issues. And it's because the establishment and the left are so insane that all these other groups have basically been like, hey, can we, can we, can we band together? Because they've yeah. lost their minds. Right. The time for talk and uh, time to discuss sometimes just becomes so hard to find now peacefully. I really prefer we use our constitutional republic system to choose your truly represent, re, representative in D.C. so we don't have to use our Second Amendment. Of course, that's something you cannot compromise. That's our last resort to fight for our freedom. But at the same time, every year you have local town election for school board, for other council meetings, city seats, and then every two years you have congressional elections. People just have to get out of their comfort zone to take actions. So if you just keep your head down, I can guarantee you it's not going to be over. They will continue to push it. The, the communists will come to test your limits and will take your freedom away. I, I you know, when it comes to the Second Amendment and stuff, I, I don't think I have the same opinion as a lot of people who think, you know, uh, you know, one day you'll need to stand up for your rights. And it's like, yeah, but hold on. Yes, but this trucker convoy is just a bunch of people driving their trucks. And look how much they've, they've accomplished yeah. and are accomplishing. Peaceful protest worked this time. See? That's right. In fact, uh, I've said it. We're not in that era anymore where standing in a building gains you political power. You know, was it, with, with January 6th, it's like, what do you think it is, 1700s? You stand in the building, you're like, aha, we have the building, it's ours now. I don't, I don't know what that's going to do in a digital era. But if tomorrow every single person in New York City said, there is no vaccine mandate, then there wouldn't be one. And, you know, the, you know, the new mayor or whatever politicians can say, no, 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 no but, but, but we said, and everyone would just be like, eh, shut up. Yeah. Then there yeah. would be none. So if it's, it's not even necessarily about nonviolent civil disobedience or protest. It's about the will of the people and what they're truly willing to do. Noncompliance. I yeah. mean, look at it this way. Speed limit. Can't go more than five miles over the speed limit. That's a ticket. Literally everyone does. So therefore, it's effectively unenforceable in, 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 in many ways. You, you might get singled out. But depending on where your jurisdiction is, you typically you go in and be like, you're on four miles over the limit. He's going to be like, get out of my courtroom. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. So cultural enforcement is the, main, is the main issue we need to strive for. And that's why when I look at the failures of the attempts at smearing, when I look at the ratings collapse of CNN, when I look at the massive popularity of shows like Joe Rogan, I'm like, we win the message. We win everything. This you is get all, also you get all the marbles. This is also why the trucker uprising is such an inflection point right now because you're also it's also relevatory in a sense because they are actually taking action that is threatening to the regime um, they are quite literally holding up the backbone of our society and they are preventing the supply chains from being continued in, yeah. in certain areas and in key areas but you're noticing though and i i can look around there's lots of people who run around calling themselves populist leaders you see as a populist right populist left calling them conservatives 
who aren't supporting the truckers or who are running around. This is, by the way, why Aaron O'Toole, who's the leader of the Conservative Party in Canada right now, just as an example, he's certainly not the only one. They're actually saying, talking about um, taking him, taking away the head of the party from him because he's just not doing much to support the truckers. And I think this is an absolutely revelatory situation where this is a litmus test actually right now. Mm. That if you are not actively supporting the truckers, then what are you doing? Right. <laughs> really, what what else are you doing other than saying I need to support these guys because they are taking action that's being effective in real time. It's peaceful. It's fun. They turned it into a rave in Ottawa. Right. They're not. Yeah. OK. Maybe there's like one or two nut jobs who show up where, you know, the guy's got a mask on carrying a Confederate flag. You know, who's even they threw him out. Right. They threw him out. So how many people are actually going to be showing the most powerful video that came out today was Rebel Media when they showed the Mounties the Royal Canadian Mounted Police walking away. They were given the enforcement rule to go in and start arresting people, and they stood down. They can't do it. You know, uh, I, I remember during Occupy Wall Street, you've got how many how many millions of people on Manhattan, on the, on the island? I think it's like 2 million, and then, uh, or, or somewhere around there. And then the entirety of New York City, the five boroughs, is I think, what, like 7 or 9 million or some ridiculously large number. And I was telling, you know, how many, how many NYPD cops are there? 30,000, 40,000? There are not enough cops to actually stop a seriously large populist uprising. Like during the May Day protests, there was something like 100,000. This is back during Occupy. There's like 100,000 people in 2012 marching down Broadway. And if all of them decided to just break social norms and go full Antifa, city's gone. There's no way they would have to call in the National Guard, and they probably wouldn't even be able to get enough National Guard in. You get to a point where you have 50,000 truckers. What do you do? You're going to send in some Mounties, start arresting them one by one? You don't have the resources to stretch the 50 miles to actually do that. They can't do anything well, about did we, it. Well, did we even talk about the, the tow truck companies yet? No. 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 Well, but, Tim, to your so, well, point. Well, let's uh, well, elaborate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, do you, do you have the story? I don't know if you want to pull it up. No, I don't know where to find well, it. Where's, I just wanted to at? say too here that this is uh, the fact that they can't enforce it is another reason why it's so important to them to set the narrative. They want you to be opposed to this group. They want to turn the entire public against them because they know there's no way they're going to be able to enforce their will. Well, I want to say something that uh, lots of people, um, because they live in fear, they bought into the rhetoric government and the media. Mm. They feel like, oh, government is good for public uh, health yes. and for society and broader common good. But that's exactly the same thing communists sold us in China. <laughs> it's for public good. You don't have gun rights because without the CCP, the China will be totally collapsed. Uh, and we're not capable of democracy either like Taiwan people because without CCP, uh, there's no stability. It, it's There are two rules of propaganda. Number one, party is always right, always right. Number two, all the media, all the press repeat same lies every day by lots of people. You become the truth. Mm. So I have to thank you, Tim. You and you look at all those alternative medias and Jack, you, you are bring truth to people. And, and, and you trust people to decide. And I'm just trying to wake up people to say, stay away from the media, go to alternative media and truth should give you the power and to set you free. And that way you can understand what is government mandate now. Oh, government mandate is not just a requirement, it's a force. If they mandate something you don't follow, you'll get fined. If you don't pay your fine, you're going to go to the locked up. You're going to lose your job. You're going to stay home. Look what happened to Australia, right? It's just that uh, people have to understand government represents force against the exactly. regular citizens. You can choose to get a vaccine, but if you force somebody to get a vaccine, what what is the freedom about if you cannot even control what this goes inside your body as medicine? That's a fundamental human right. So all those leftists support human rights should understand that government is for let people decide. Amen. So thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.